members that were into sewing. My mom didn't know how to sew. Um, my grandparents didn't know how to sew. <laughs> and uh, in fact, my parents never even dressed me up in a costume. So I never experienced Halloween. And so the first time I was in a costume was when I cosplayed. So I, like, I didn't have that aspect of my childhood where I like got dressed up as Princess Leia and have like a cute little picture of myself or something. Um, I just, I don't know, my parents just were not into it um, and didn't think of it. And I totally have given them hell for it, by the way. These days, like, I totally have sat them down and been like, you, you never ever even showed me what it could be like. And I'm just like, okay. Um, so, so I had to learn how to sew for out of necessity because I, I wanted to wear a costume and there was literally no other way to get it. So I had a I had like a used sewing machine that I borrowed and then later on bought from a friend and um, they taught me how to do a straight stitch and do a zigzag <coughs> stitch. And they taught me how to read a pattern, although I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the pattern but they, they showed me that you can use a pattern and then lay fabric under it and cut it out and make something. And so that concept was like, okay, okay, that that is very helpful. <laughs> so from that point on, it was a lot of just like blindly testing things out and you know trying things out and um, having seams first and um, you know just really learning by doing. And it it took a few years. How do I handle inappropriate contact? I'm I am very um, I try. I try to be very straightforward, but as a woman, it's hard. It's hard because there are moments where we freeze up. We don't want to, but it happens. And I hate myself every time afterwards. And it used to be that I dealt with a lot more inappropriate contact. I think it was uh, sort of around the area era where social media really became, you know, sort of the, the driving factor in cosplay and really to sort of changed the cosplay game. That's around 2010 to 2012. And I remember sort of that time period, it was kind of perilous for, uh, for, for, for cosplayers to go to conventions. Like, you know, um, there were a lot of incidences of harassment or inappropriate touching and I certainly dealt with my share of it. Um, and then I think that the cosplay, uh, cosplay does you know, cosplay is not consent movement really helped a lot, and that sort of shows us sort of the power of the community, and that if we band together against it, something that you know we can create change. Like now, cosplay is not consent is um, in just about every guideline at many conventions that I'm at, I see signage at a lot of conventions, and it just sort of, you know, reminds people that we are people, <laughs> like we're not just our characters, and um, however, that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, so, and I think that as a well-known cosplayer, and as someone who attends a convention as a guest, I am a lot safer than many young and upcoming cosplayers. So it's like, a person is going to think twice before they decide to grab me or say something to me um, if they know that I've been invited to be here and that they could very easily get banned if they you know, said something. So as I've become more well known, I've not had to deal with it as much. But I am worried for all the new and coming and young cosplayers who do not have that safety of the face recognition or the name recognition. And that's why I think as, um, as leaders and as you know, role models in the community, we need to be as aware as possible and we need to try to set good examples as possible while still being ourselves. You know? So it's like, I think overall, in the last few years, um, my costumes have become more conservative. This is honestly one of my most revealing costumes at the moment. Um, I used to run around in fur bikinis, so just 
like Felicia from Darkstalkers, or you know, like almost like fetish gear, like uh, Chrissy from Dead or Alive. And these days, like I'm aware that the the you know the image that I have um, affects other people. And I also work with um, companies like uh, Joann's and McCall's and such. So I try to think of myself as more than just, I'm just going to do whatever the heck I want and what makes me happy and what is fun. Because I can still have fun and find things that make me happy within the community and thinking about the community. So it's a, it's a tough topic and I hope that if, you know, any cosplayer experiences harassment that they do not that they do not stay silent like you know anybody if there's no security near you just uh, go up to the, the next vendor that, that is near you or just any Congo -er. and um, you know like make sure that you report them make sure that you like hey you saw that right you know like you have a witness somebody who saw this and um, really like show that it's not okay so how do not consent keep supporting it, you know, practice it. My advice and the way that I do social media is um, I I have a platform that I like and that's currently it's Instagram. That can change by the way because social media platforms evolve. Like it used to be Facebook. Facebook was a great platform and then they changed it. So so right now I like posting on Instagram. Um, sort of like I just it, it's sort of it's the it's the platform that pops in my head if I want to communicate some information so find the platform that suits you you know and I feel like as you play on them you'll, you'll like instinctively be able to tell if one of them sort of calls out to you or makes it more fun to interact so stick to that platform um, don't pressure yourself with too many platforms you know like I have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and that's about it. You know, I, I, I have, you know, DeviantArt, and YouTube, and all those other platforms, but I don't post on them as often, which means I, I don't post on them daily. Um, and that's totally fine. So, but I try to post on Instagram once a day. And that's just sort of like the little rule that, that I gave to myself. And, you know, I have, I feel like lots of content that, I could divide up into a daily post. And thankfully, there are apps that can help you schedule posts. I find later very helpful for Instagram. Um, even uh, you can make, you can save drafts in Instagram. So you can like go in there and make a few posts, but not post them yet. Sort of like just whenever a thought pops in your head, you know, put it down there. And then um, sort of think about when you would like to post. I do find it's important for me to be there to, to at least answer some comments. You know, I, I like I can't do that for every single platform, but at least for Instagram, I try to be there to, to at least you know answer some questions if there are any. So um, see it as a way for you not to just advertise, but for you just to engage with your peers and with your community. Uh, and as for growing your social media, it is a it is a rat race. We all have to kind of be in it. But my advice to everybody is uh, patience and consistency. So even if you don't think that your posts are getting likes, or comments, or views, keep posting. Do not stop posting. By being consistent, you are able to get in a routine, you're able to discover what kind of um, what kind of content you like to make, what you like to share with people, and eventually what kind of brand you want to create. Because we all kind of somehow we're kind of branding ourselves. Um, and be patient because you never know if somebody's gonna look at your stuff and uh, the, the people that drop off are the ones that are not patient enough because they want to see results faster when they see somebody else get results faster and they're like why is it not happening to me so try not to be frustrated be patient and post consistently